to the field from San Antonio, Texas. I can hear, but so do I have to bring my own headset? Or... I'll get you one today. Oh. No, I'm gonna I get you a headset. Bring one. I have a headset. No, I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get one. <laughs> Obviously, welcome to the field, the Crossman World Class Drum Corps, Texas only World Class Drum Corps, uh, top twenty in the world the last two years, and it's the fortieth year of the Crossman. How cool is that? That's awesome. Is awesome. Can't Fred wait. is Fred is blushing. He did not know he had a stalker at breakfast this morning. <laughs> I was watching him. I should have texted you and said, "I'm watching you." I wouldn't have looked at my phone. You anyway. didn't. Yeah, I know. I texted you last night. You sent me that text last night, and I didn't look at it until lunchtime. <laughs> I was like, anyway. "Oh, okay." I'm glad Fred <laughs> pays attention to his phone. As we got the chef over here from Krispy Kreme Donuts, uh, my five year old. Uh, is that our newest sponsor? That is, yeah, I wish. Can you imagine having Krispy Kreme <laughs> uh, as a Crossman sponsor every we, we morning? We would all weigh about 300 pounds. No, not the way you guys work out. We would, Yeah, but we would eat lots of donuts. The staff, so, oh, yeah. yeah. The staff would be like, oh, I want to intern getting free donuts <laughs> from Krispy Kreme. So, uh, obviously, folks, you can go online, crossman.org, find out more information. Got uh, all kinds of things on there we're going to go through. And, of course, of course on Twitter, it's uh, at Crossman. And, uh, of course, this weekend, February camp it has begun. I know. It's kind of a weird one because it's actually February slash March. early March. Ah, right? That's crazy. And then we still have another one at the end of the month. But our great friends at Madison High School and our band director friend, uh, Phil Flynn, who's was on the Crossman admin team a bunch of years ago, he is like the world's funniest comedian. By the way, if you ever <laughs> get to spend a few minutes with him, he'll keep you laughing. But you know, they've been such great, great hosts for us and a great facility for us to do what we need to do to get ready, you know, for the summer. Because you can really spread out on that campus. Well, they have four gyms yeah. actually. the The two old gyms they were able to keep those buildings. And so it gave them extra capacity, and that means that those things are usually always available you know, when the crossmen need them, which is nice. That's awesome because we got a future crossman snare drummer sitting at the table with us. He uh, is eating frozen marshmallows. I've never heard of the putting marshmallows in the freezer, but that's what uh, my beautiful wife said, so that's what they've done. Uh, but he starts his drum lessons today, 10 years old, and uh, it's one of those things that we've, we've known, and I've talked to a couple of the of – the, musicians we have mm -hmm. the athletic musicians i call them because you really have to be athletic in order to do yeah, this musician athletes there for you sure. go and uh i've talked to them and they and i've asked a couple of them i said how's how early did you start on your instrument when did you learn many of them said fifth sixth seventh grade oh, yeah usually middle school they're yeah. you know they're asking them in the elementary school as they're finishing up whatever that year may be most times it's fifth grade the band directors from the middle school usually come down and start uh, asking people what instrument they're interested in and try them out on different things. It's almost like a petting zoo of instruments. And, you know, that's what sets the course. I, I remember, you know, when our kids did the very same thing. Now both of them are in their mid to late 20s, and Amy's still playing her oboe after really? all these years. Yeah, wow. she's up at uh, Miami University up in Oxford, Ohio, finishing up her master's degree in oboe performance. So you never know what, you know, that instrument choice, how long that will be with you. Right? I asked him, do you want to play saxophone? Do you want to play tuba? Mm -hmm. Anything like that? He's like, no, I want to play the drums. I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. I Good. gave him the option. I did not push him. I did not push him. But we have a lot of folks that are listening, of course, and we'd like to thank everybody for listening. And uh, we're going to play a quick commercial. We're going to come back. I'm going to ask Fred what the secrets are this week and uh, see if I can get anything out of them. This is Mark and Fred from the Crossman. Oh, yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Crossman, world-class drum corps, and I speak for you. Learning events want you to save the dates. 13 and 14 June 2014. That's right, the Crossman, Texas' only world-class drum corps, representing San Antonio, Texas to the world, presenting their second annual one-mile run, walk, stroll, crawl, whatever you need to do. How fast can you run one mile? All information on ispeedforyou.net or crossman.org. I say save the dates 13 and 14 June. The run is on the 14th. 
But the 13th is their MMX, their dress rehearsal, before they go out on tour around the country. Find out more information again at crossman.org or at ispeakforyou.net. Of course, the second annual one mile coming up. But we got to get through the camps first. Uh, Fred, are you starting to train for your one mile? I've been on the elliptical machine a lot, so I haven't really hit the <laughs> treadmill and started to work on that one mile time. But you know, I, I know I got to get busy because they're they're gunning for me this they're year. They're gunning for you. We you know we did do we did do the uh, the age group the certain age group for you. If you're the executive director of a drum corps. Uh, but you, there's there's increments. Between if you're, the ages of 59 and 60. 59 and 60. Yeah. You have to um, be able to sleep on the Winnebago. Had to be born in San Diego, California. Had to be born. Uh, see, there's there's stipulations yeah, to it. There's I got stipulations. Them. I, I'm there. I'm there. Right? And your initials had to be FM. That's so it. there you go. I think I'm the only one that qualifies. <laughs> there you, you have your own age group. That's awesome. <laughs> there's actually a run coming up here in San Antonio um, that it's April 1st. Obviously... Um, Crossman won't be here, but you'll be here. It's the uh, April first, April Fool's run, and uh, just give a little secret, real quick. I'm probably gonna get killed by the race director if she actually listening to this. But they're gonna do the awards by height. Ah, huh, wow! Five feet and under, five full into five. Why three. not? Yeah, you know, just yep. make it a little bit crazy. So, but uh, of course, camp coming up this weekend, move in and everything is tomorrow. So, as I promised everybody, I'm gonna get a secret out of Fred. So, what could be the secret of the week? Well, let me think. We were going to announce this week. We were. But we didn't quite get that done, so we're going to hold off a little while. <sighs> so I'll just – the secret is we're going to announce on April 1st. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't believe anything on April 1st. So obviously That's you gotta, the point. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I said that last year. I'm retiring. I'm not going to do any radio, no announcing stuff. I'm just going to sit at home and eat ho-hos and bonbons, <laughs> and everybody's like, what? And I was like, yeah. April, April Fool's Day. Yeah. And, and instead, you've only gotten 10 times busier than you said that. I know. I know. But I always have time for the Crossman. We are so looking forward to this year. Obviously, the 40th year, that is just amazing because there's not a lot of organizations that have been around for 40 years. I mean, we know places here in San Antonio that have gone away within two years. Right. And yeah. here's the Crossman, 40 years later, still strong. It, it just, you know, the heritage that the Corps has, the history, the dedicated people that have been involved o over the course of all those years. I'm sure there were some scary moments, you know, during those early years. Uh, and, I, and I know of others that happened, you know, about midway and, and even up until you know, right before the Corps moved to Texas that, you know, it took some dedicated folks that said, we're not going to let this thing die to keep it going. And and they kept it alive and in good shape long enough for us to, you know, move it here to San Antonio and, and we've here we are thriving and growing and and I think they would be really proud of where their crossmen are today. So obviously you had a big meeting with San Antonio last week. You're gonna give out information about uh, that? you know, the we feel that we have something to offer the visitor and tourism bureau and it, what they really measure is the impact on hotel rooms. Right. Because they're funding is generated right. from the hotel and, and motel tax. So we now have a better under or more thorough understanding of you know what they really need to be able to justify any kind of support. And they get hit every day. You know, there's people just right, feeling right. like this is an automatic. I think we bring something different to the table in that we are a traveling road show that can carry their brand all over the country. We just have to help them connect the dots as to how valuable that is monetarily. How many how many extra hotel rooms will that sell because the crossmen are out carrying the message? So we may get there someday. Is there a way we can do like uh, something on the side of the of the one of the trucks or something like a mobile I don't know flat screen or something with their with their commercial on it? <laughs> You know, Come to San Antonio. you think about all of the events that are put on that we perform at, I'm sure that there could be a connection advertising wise or, you know, the movie theater events. Right. You know, who knows if they couldn't do something there. Obviously, they sell hotels when the when the Southwest comes through, when the championships here at the yes, Alamo Dome. Th and that that was my point uh, that but that is that is more DCI specific. Right. right. 
So I I did make sure that I talked to the folks. We had a board meeting, or actually a finance committee this past w- meeting this past weekend for DCI, and I made sure that I you know, spoke with Dan and and those guys about that potential because the Indianapolis uh, Visitors and Tourism Bureau does support DCI and the championships because of the economic impact that it has and the number of hotel rooms that are being sold you know, over the course of that three or four days. I know that's happening here, too, right. at the Alamo Dome because a lot of our folks, our p- the parents and grandparents, will spend, make it a weekend. You know, they come down that's and watch true. the the regional and then they'll spend the, because all of the cores usually have free day on Sunday. So that's an opportunity for the families to reconnect with their kids about halfway through the through the summer and take them out to dinner and hang out down at the river walk. And so we're generating business for the city of San Antonio. We just need to figure out how to measure it. Hmm. We had another interesting meeting that morning with the folks from SA 2020. And huge, yeah, that's a huge initiative for San Antonio that not only involves music and the performing arts, but just about every area of the city, education, healthcare, you name it, it's under that umbrella. And the whole idea is it's the mayor's initiative and what's San Antonio going to look like by the year 2020 and how can we all help the city get there? So that was, that was a pretty interesting conversation. And, and in all of that, there's going to be a database established. You know, we signed up to be a partner so that we can be part of that process and we can promote our events through the SA 2020 calendar. So right. they'll be able to measure, you know, the input and give us reports of, you know, where they came from and, and, you know, help us tell, sell tickets and, and that kind of thing. So it's two very energetic young ladies that are in charge of this thing. And it is a tremendous job. It's huge. It's beyond anybody's scope. I don't know how they're going to get it done, but they are definitely working hard at it. It is. And the mayor, obviously folks, if you don't know the mayor of uh, San Antonio here, uh, he is on the fast track, I'll say. Yes. Mayor Castro is uh, a friend of everybody. It doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, Independent. It doesn't matter. He he really loves the city. Right. And he wants it to grow. Obviously, he's one of the best ones uh, for company growth. A lot of companies are moving into San Antonio uh, because of tax reasons or what have you. Econ- uh, economy it doesn't matter but uh he really wants the city to to prosper and the sa 2020 is just one just one of his programs that he's established and uh it's gonna be huge and be the crossman to be a part of it is is a very big deal yeah we just you know we asked molly and i can't remember the other lady's name you know if there's any way we can help we're here and uh just sitting there with them for an hour and a half, you got to see the scope of this thing. I wouldn't know where to start. You know, it's just that big of a job, but they're going for it. They're going to make it happen. And they have 70 people, 70 organizations that signed up uh, at some previous interactions. Right. And this was a second meeting and there were probably 50 to 70 arts and, and uh, fine arts groups there and among others right and and so i'm sure that a bunch of those groups will you know throw their hat in the ring and try and help and help get this thing off the ground and that's where you know like i said we're we're, we're here whatever we can do for the crossman because it's so important to get back to the community you love mm-hmm. um obviously being a being uh, a percussionist i will say um and everybody already knows the story that you know first time i contacted you i was just giddy i was i didn't i think i hung up on you i was like oh it's Fred. click click you know <laughs> Fred, Fred actually answered the phone, but uh, it's one of those things that that uh, you know we're so excited to bring the Crossman to the world to have everybody know about the Crossman. It's a fortieth year, like I said. There's not a lot of organizations or companies, for that matter, that have been around for more than ten years, twenty years. Right. And here you have some of the greatest and finest musicians uh, in the world that are based right here in San Antonio, or you know, obviously Pennsylvania, a lot of alumni and everything like that. But this is where they got their start was the Crossman or Drum Corps International for that matter. Right. But it is so important that we we bring that fact out that the scores in academics are higher when you're part of your marching band in high school or, or any, part or, of the arts or music. Yeah. yeah. There's a definite correlation there. And then when you stick the athletic component in on top of that, 
you know, there are football coaches that will bring their teams out to watch some of the drum corps practices because of how many hours we put in. And if those guys ever complain about two, two hour, uh, two yeah, a days, that's right, that's right. you know, he'll, he'll definitely straighten them out. Now you need to watch this and see what's going on here. But cause there isn't anybody that works as hard as, I mean, we've had, I've said this many times, we've had people that have gone on to go into the military and it almost sounds like they were disappointed that boot camp wasn't as hard as drum corps. <laughs> <laughs> the drum corps was definitely more difficult. I can attest them. to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I went to when I went to boot camp, I'd run two half marathons on Saturday, Sunday, and then went to boot camp on Monday. I think it was. And the first thing they did was have us run, and I just kept running. I just kept running, and they said, "Okay, you can stop. You know, stop <laughs> running now." And the guy goes, "Well, what do you what do you do?" I said, "Well, I'm a runner. That's what I do. I just right. I just ran two half marathons in the last three days." And uh, he goes, "Oh, you're our PT coordinator." And I was like, "What?" He goes, "You get all the fat guys out." <laughs> At four thirty in the morning, you run them before Reveille, and I was like, "But, but I like sleep." And he, no, that was not a good answer, you know. So it's one of those. It's one of those like the, the company commander asks you, "What's your name?" My name is Mark. No, that's not your name. Recruit, you know. <laughs> but it was it was it was uh it was easy because I've done obviously drumline camps and everything like that where we ran a lot a lot of cardio, and then to go to a boot camp like that, you're going, it should be harder. But as you right. as you we we've talked about. Recently, or in in the past, we did a heart. There was a heart rate monitor on a young man for the performance, and his heart rate was just through the roof when he was on the field. Before he went on, normal, no big deal. Through the roof when he was on the field. As yeah, soon as he just walked put off, that drum on, yeah. and his heart rate jumped up. And there's a link to that video on our on our Twitter feed. Yes. you know, under the photos and videos, so you can find that. Yeah, it's real interesting. ESPN did the document. You know, it was part of when DCI was on the ESPN broadcast. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. We're going to play a commercial. We'll be right back, folks. This is Crossman. You can find him online, crossman.org. And on Twitter, at Crossman, this is Mark and Fred, the Bones Hour. Save the dates. 13 and 14 June 2014. That's right. The Crossman, Texas's only world class drum corps, representing San Antonio, Texas to the world, presenting their second annual one mile run, walk, stroll, crawl, whatever you need to do. How fast can you run one mile? All information on iSpeedForYou.net or Crossman.org. I say save the dates 13 and 14 June. The run is on the 14th. But the 13th is their MMX, their dress rehearsal, before they go out on tour around the country. Find out more information again at crossmen.org or I speak for you.net. <laughs>
So, yeah, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, telling a story about the friend of my wife getting in a wreck yesterday. So, please make sure you have your driver's license current and current registration. I just as, got paid. I know. He's got two cents. I know. Back in our day, they used to buy gum or something. I don't know. Now you can't buy anything <laughs> with it. But, uh, so, yeah, please make sure you have a current driver's license and insurance. Someone hit my wife yesterday and didn't have it either. And they still let her drive off and uh, because she had five kids in her car and they don't want to, the police officer did not want to upset the apple cart, so to speak. So, of course, me, being prior military lawyer, I called Northeast Independent School District Police Department and said, hey, I want to know why, blah, 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 blah. So they didn't call me back, but they called him, the police officer. Oh. So he went to Michelle this morning and said, oh, I heard your husband is a little upset. And it was my prerogative. You know, I, da, da, da. he started basically justifying justifying his lack of laziness, I'll say, or lack of, you know, lack of why he did not take this lady's vehicle. And... uh and Michelle goes, well, you know, he was just upset. You know, he wants to protect his family, blah, blah, blah. And the guy goes, well, you know, if he has a problem, he can come talk to me. And Michelle goes, I don't think you want that. Mm -hmm. So I called his office and I said, I will be over there tomorrow morning to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, boy. And I haven't been military minded since I retired in 2005. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this conversation with this young man tomorrow. Because one, obviously, if anybody, you know, I, and I'm not saying different areas or whatever. But if I got pulled over pulling going down Stone Oak, I didn't have a license, didn't have insurance, I wouldn't be driving my vehicle. Right. There would there would be no it'd be like, okay, you're have a nice walk, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. But no, because she had five kids, I'm sorry. I have no heart for that. Anyway, we're talking about the crossman. <laughs> you are really on fire today, man. I I'm very amped up. Nothing nothing and then I and I've told and that's I had breakfast with the in laws today. Mm -hmm. And uh and they said the same thing. Wow, you're really upset. And I go, well, there's three things you don't mess with. My family, my food, and my money. That, you know, those three things. You can mess with my cars. You can do all that stuff. But you mess with those three things, we'll have an issue. So, Or uh, I'll put four on there. You mess with my crossman, then we have an issue. So, <laughs> Don't mess with crossman. Do not mess with the crossman. But uh, obviously, there's some of these going on. So let's go on uh, the crossman.org website. That's crossman.org. We've got the drum major experience camp coming up in June. But, of course, this weekend, at James Madison High School, uh, is our February first part of it's March our camp. Music, music camp. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what are they going to be doing this and, weekend? And we also have a special initiative that we just just started, where there'll be some folks that want to learn from our symbol line instructors, and so there there's about a dozen or so people that are going to be there. For oh, that. nice. So it's a new educational initiative we have going, and those folks that have an ambition to be the best marching cymbal line player right they can learn from our great folks and you know they probably have aspirations of making the drum corps someday so it's additional it you know um knowledge that, that they can gain over the course of the weekend now you starting it off with the cymbals this weekend but it's going to go throughout the core though yeah we're we haven't formalized exactly what's next right but it will be either percussion or brass, and I think I think it'll be brass next time because of all of the uh, WGI stuff that's still going on. So the you know the drummers probably be connected doing something. <sighs> drummers. So we got all kinds of stuff going. On. Of course, you can go to Crossman org for more information. Uh, you can volunteer today. That's on there the one fifty one club as I call it, but it's because uh, there's one hundred fifty members in the core. One hundred fifty one. The volunteers. There you go. So that is also on there. The drum major experience camp, June tenth to the thirteenth. Find out more information. And then the drum line battle. We did this last year. We were the first ones to do it uh, here in Texas, of course. Uh, and this year it's going to be June thirteenth, San Antonio. That's a Friday night, part of the MMX. And then in Dallas on the fifteenth, which is Sunday, part of the uh, part of the square event. Uh, so what can you tell folks about the drum line battle? Because it can just be anybody. You don't have to be a school. You don't have to be anything like that, right? Right. We're we're just encouraging drum lines. You could even say if you were, let's say, a university drum line and they couldn't get the support of the university, but they would allow them to use the equipment or whatever. Those guys could be independent and uh, you know show up and be their own group. We're not going to you know, require them to be attached to any school or anything. Uh, you know, last year we had. The Guardians and uh, Genesis both fielded drumline teams, and 
we had a little battle there right on the on the track on the finish line That's there awesome. of the grandstands yeah the Genesis guys are really proud of that trophy, by the way. Are you going to do the same kind of trophy, or are you going to change it up every we've year? We've already talked to our friends at Zildjian about you know, cutting out another one that looks like a Crossman Maltese cross, and, and then we take care of it the rest of the way down at Monarch Trophy. They build one special for us. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. But there's so much on the website. Obviously, there's a donation there on there. Uh, the shop at Amazon Smile. Let's talk about that right there. Crossman Productions Inc. What is the what is the Amazon? Well, you know, there are lots of companies that are looking for ways to allow their customers to give back to the causes that are important to them. And there's a number we had. We've been hooked up with good shop and good search and and that's one way if you, you know everybody is doing internet search well if you use the good shop or good search uh link then every search is a penny towards your cause and every shopping everything that you buy a uh, percentage of that goes back to the cause that you support well amazon has decided that every purchase that you make through the smile amazon portal a percentage of that purchase is kicked back to the nonprofit organization that you choose. Nice. So you, you if you go to smile.amazon.com, there's a link on our on our homepage so that, that can take you there and then just choose Crossman Productions as your charity of choice. Then every time, you know, people are all shopping at Amazon. I need to Why tell my father-in-law because yeah. I think he buys everything from Amazon. You know, I've gotten a little spoiled by the thing, too. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> you don't have to hop in the car and drive down to the whatever store. No. You just order it and then within a day or two. Yeah, he gave us, he gave us his prime. old TV because he bought one off really? of Amazon. No kidding. Yeah, bigger than that. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So when I watch so my Crossman videos, like I'm like, oh. inch screen or something. I don't know how big that is, but it's, it's like little Crossman or running around my TV screen because it's really that big. Right. But he did. He bought a TV from Amazon. And it's huge. So I need to tell him, hey, every time you go on Amazon, this is what you need to do, obviously, to help just, out the crossing. Just, yeah, and, and the software is so smart that it remembers remembers you from right. whatever computer that you used when you signed up. So it's really pretty seamless and pretty easy. So I know you know this, and, I, and we've, we've probably talked about this before. I'm sure we have. But how important is social media – and and how the interwebs are today vices were when you started with the crossman it's so much easier to get your message out it's really incredible you're able to engage people you send out a tweet and you get 10 people retweeting it to all their friends and you know so right. it's just this real momentum thing and i think it allows us to expand our fan base and and an engagement with those people our the number of Twitter followers now is up over thirteen thousand. Before we went on the road last summer, I think it was around seven or eight thousand. So it just keeps expanding, keeps growing. right? And then, uh, as far as the Facebook page is concerned, that one's up around seventeen or eighteen thousand people. So just think with typing a few characters, maybe attaching a photo, you can you can send your message out to all those people. And that was impossible before. Yeah. Cause obviously the Crossman celebrating their 40th year this year. And we're so proud of that fact. Uh, 40 years ago, they were doing snail mail. I mean, it was a whole different world. Yeah, that uh, fundraising for nonprofits was a lot more difficult. We still do mailers, but now we're able to do a couple of other things or enhance those mail campaigns by having stuff on the website and then using social messaging to get it out to all those people that, you know, maybe they're too busy, but they don't mind looking at their phone and checking out the latest message that we sent out. And, and, and we've talked about it before, like it, like at competitions, as soon as you're off the field, people are already, I mean, obviously while you're performing, people are already videotaping it and they're posting it on their Facebook, right. Twitter, whatever. And then the scores are up. It used to be you'd have to go online and go and refresh, 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 refresh. You know, please, please, please. Even before you had websites and everything, you know, you, you waited for the the newspaper to show up a <laughs> week right. after That's the right. event. Hopefully if the newspaper had it in right. there. Yeah. yeah. So it it is an incredible changing world. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to, you know, we're always looking for ways to help generate more money to help us do what we're doing here. There's another iText, there's another yes. program there where it doesn't 
we're not asking you to write a check. People don't have to write a check to help us. If they go on the iTex, hook up through the iTex link and register your phone, you will receive one to as many as three texts per day. And you can build your profile so you can pretty much tell them what items you're interested in. And those will be deals that you could activate and use to save money on things that you're going to do anyway. So just you receiving those texts, the Crossman benefit because the revenue that the advertisers pay to send that text message, a percentage of that goes to the core. So it is, it's a no-cost item to you. You probably save some money along the way. Yep, so true. And the core benefits. And this thing's about to go live here. It's within the next three or four weeks, those text messages start, start going to start going out. We have about 400 people that have registered their phone. If we could double that, double the impact. You know, so it would be a great thing. So if you're out there listening and you haven't done this, please connect your through iText to the Crossman, and you'll start receiving some great benefits from that yeah you find that on the the right side of the page of crossman.org just go down and uh, it's right there under the amazon smile uh, site you go down you see it it says support by joining support us by joining iText today click here for more information and uh, vent we'd like to thank you very much uh, appreciate everything you're doing for for us uh, vent of course taking care of us for that and there's so much more on there there's crossman visa card uh and then let's go and talk about our sponsors a little bit uh, obviously, we couldn't go anywhere without got to go trailways. I know. We, I had a nice conversation with our friend Tom Fox up there, and they've got lots of exciting things going on. They they keep picking up more and more business. They doubled the size of their company about a year ago by acquiring another company. Nice. And so now they're in Dallas and in Fort Worth, and they have two or three new universities that they're doing the on-campus transportation for. So they are really growing like crazy, and and. They're, they're, they may be revising their logo, so we may be Uh-oh. calling them something different Uh-oh. here in the next few months. Uh-oh. Uh oh, it's in their plans. It's just a matter of when they're going to pull the trigger on that new branding, and we'll, Crossman will be part of that branding effort and carrying that brand around the country. So it may happen before we go on before we go on tour, but it may not happen until after, and so that'll determine you know whether the there's different signage on the vehicles or not. Because it, it is so important. Obviously, you're traveling thousands and thousands of miles in such a short amount of time um, that you've got to be comfortable. And those got to go trailways is are amazing. They're comfortable. You can put so much in there. Uh, obviously, what happens on the buses stay on the buses, kind of thing. And and uh, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Well, you're on the Winnebago, right? Which is it a Winnebago, folks? It's like, it's it's a Gucci RV, I'll call it. It's not quite Gucci, but I'm it's definitely it. comfortable. I'm gonna yeah. post it on Twitter. How how incredible that uh that recreational vehicle is the, the, the headquarters. It's a it's a Dutchman 34, I think it is, and it has a a Chevy truck chassis. So it's a real real truck. It right. Will, it will go up hills without any problems. It'll stop. It, you know, it's a great vehicle for. But you're also pulling a trailer convoy. with it. Yeah, we're pulling a 20 foot cargo trailer, <laughs> and you practically don't know it's back there. And uh, you know, it's definitely where our office is, and, and it makes it nice that we're able to, you know, take care of business yep. while we're going down the road or where we're parked at the schools or whatever. But it's a great vehicle for leading the convoy. What is that? Are we on red alert? What's going on here? That's my phone. I forgot to turn it down. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, uh, now I'm getting emails from Rock and Roll Marathon, so that's pretty interesting. But, no, we got so much stuff going on. And, obviously, you posted this morning. Obviously, my speaker systems are Yamaha. Yamaha is a sponsor of the Crossman. That's the only reason I have them, basically, because they sponsor the Crossman. See that? But spreading, the, spreading the love. Spreading the love. Because Yamaha has such incredible equipment. Uh, because you got some goodies in today. Yeah, we got the rest of our baritones. So, and we have all and all of our euphoniums now. So the last piece of the puzzle is we'll get the trumpets probably the end of this uh, next month, and we're ready for bear. We received a new xylophone a couple of weeks ago. So we got so we got everything we need for the front ensemble and there and. And then the brass is just about all taken care of. Okay, with all the new stuff coming in, Fred, I've got to ask you, what do you do with the old stuff? 
We sell the we sell the <laughs> stuff after the summer. Oh, thank you, Mark. We, we just a sit- lead way into that, you know. <laughs> that's that's that was a really smooth transition too. Thank you. It's a great program that Yamaha has put together for the cores that they support and they use their gear, in that we're able to buy the equipment, use it for the summer, get it and have it cleaned and serviced, and then resell it. And a lot of times it'll be schools that will buy it that are trying to stretch their budget. Right. So the equipment's in great shape because it only has one summer use on it. And then they take that and they'll use it for the next 20 years probably, you know, in their band program. Because I think Churchill brought, your, brought the percussion, uh, the snares and stuff one year, I believe. Yeah, but it, the snares and the, the battery equipment is a little different because every other year we send them back to Yamaha. Right. Yamaha has them reconditioned and they make them available through their dealer network. Sometimes a school may say, those are the ones I want. You know, right. The Crossman drums are the ones I want because of the color and numbers and everything. And they all get in touch with the Yamaha guys in advance of us returning them and try to set that up that they would be the purchasers. But Which worked really well for Churchill High School because obviously the same colors. And Tony Churchill, uh, former tech, he was a, he is was the band a director. Yeah. yeah, now he's the band director over there. So that helped out. Yeah, the cr- Crossman tentacles are really in the, the entire <laughs> northeast. Everywhere. I know, and I can't go anywhere. I was at Johnson uh, last week, and I was talking to someone in the band about a run coming up and everything, and I, and I had on my Crossman shirt, and uh, a couple kids came over and said, oh, yeah, we're Crossman. And I was like, That's what? Great. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, sure. Oh, no, they we're Bones. The, show yeah. you the cross. Show yeah. me the cross. I'm like, oh, oh you know. This is amazing. So we're going to go on with another, a couple more of our sponsors, of course. Uh, Tree Works Handcrafted Chimes. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Yeah. It, I don't know of anyone that makes a finer piece of equipment when it comes to chimes. And, and we use them every year in the pit. There's always a, an appropriate moment where that's such an effective sound. And the and the quality of those instruments is great. So we're we're happy to have a relationship with tree works. Yeah. My, my junior year, I played, uh, chimes in, in an orchestra band. I think it was, and it was just four notes and it was only maybe I hit it maybe twice each. And that was it. That was my only thing I had to do the whole performance. I mean, out of three songs, that was it. Yeah. These, this isn't those giant tubes. Oh no, that's what I was thinking. That's what you're playing. Yeah. These are more delicate and where, (laughs) where they would be, hanging from a, one of the front ensemble right, right. pieces of equipment and you play them with your hand right you know, and it just makes that nice yeah we we're playing those at sam ash sound. the other day oh okay so yeah. I, I knew that and i was going it's not the thing you use the, the no mallet. we're doing the mallet yeah and he was like you gotta hit it hard and i was going i'm afraid to break it and he's like you won't break it hit it and okay. so oh uh, mr mr uh, richard degado my old uh band teacher uh thank you sir my old percussion instructor uh thank you for letting me beat up on things and <laughs> I don't have to worry about breaking them. So, of course, Director Showcase International, tell us about uh, DSI. DSI is a great company. They provide us with our marching shoes. They're always working on the next best shoe uh, for the industry. And uh, we were one of the first to use the prototype for for their latest effort last summer. And, you know, just... We put them through a lot of paces. You know, we'll we'll do more in one summer than most folks will do in five years of use. So they get some really great feedback. Uh, but the the company produces great products. It's a great relationship. And with the addition of Crossman Connection now, as as representing the companies that Crossman endorses, we will be making all of those DSI products available through Crossman Connection. Oh so, wow. So if you have a band program and you're you're looking for a supplier for your marching shoes or any of your color guard shoes or gloves or marching gloves for the brass instruments or um you know any of the the f- flags or sabers or any of that kind of stuff we will have all that we have all that stuff available now and every purchase th- through uh Crossman Connection helps support the core a percentage of every purchase goes to support underwrite what we do, uh, getting the crossman to go down the road. 
That's so important. Again, folks, uh, crossman.org. Follow them on Twitter, at Crossman. We're going to be right back. It's literally going to be a short commercial, maybe a minute or two. And then I'm going to ask Fred the hard questions, the very hard questions. Mark and Fred from the Bones Hour. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Crossman, world-class drum corps, and I speak for you. Learning events want you to save the dates. 13 and 14 June 2014. That's right, the Crossman, Texas' only world-class drum corps, representing San Antonio, Texas to the world, presenting their second annual one-mile run, walk, stroll, crawl, whatever you need to do. How fast can you run one mile? All information on ispeakforyou.net or crossman.org. I say save the dates 13 and 14 June. The run is on the 14th, but the 13th is their MMX, their dress rehearsal, before they go out on tour around the country. Find out more information again at crossman.org or on ispeakforyou.net. Fred can't hear what I'm listening to and what you're listening to. I can't imagine. This is the Crossman Hour, otherwise known as the Bone Show. Fred, what I'm playing is a little bit of history. 1992 snare warm-up. Oh, it, it always has to be the snare. Though, that was going to be a trivia question, but I just answered my own trivia <laughs> question. 1992 snare. And, of course, you got one of the greatest snare drummers in the world on staff. Okay, which one are you talking about? I don't want to oh, offend there's a, anybody. There's a mini M, but uh, the main one you're I'm talking, talking about, Mr. 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 Green. Okay, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Green, incredible young man. And and, and Derek Kelly. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. How important is it to to have that kind of expertise? And I'm not talking about just drums, but Chris Lyman, I mean the the staff. Well, how important is it to have such a great staff? If if you're if you have someone in front of you that has done it before, then that adds. A level of credibility, right? So you're more apt to pay attention, to, you know, to what they're doing or what they've done, and and take instruction from them. So that, that's probably the real benefit there. Uh, Tim was on the, uh, I think he was in the Cadets. I can't remember what years, but you know, very um, high profile program, and and was instructed by the best. So you would expect that his level of teaching would also be uh, same with Derek. And it's it's just it's just amazing when I was when I was sitting there at Madison in the last camp watching these guys and then obviously watching Chris mm -hmm. running around and watching the staff you know it's just going this is really in my view and obviously I'm biased mm -hmm. Crossman uh, but in my view this is really the best of the best I mean you have you have folks that have been there done that and I know DCI around the around the globe it's that way but when the guys can hear a note like Chris can know it, see a note and go, no, that's, that's not what you're, what we're looking for. Or the try and help people. Right. Not try to help and they're them not, develop. And, right. And they're not, and they're not, and, and maybe it's me or maybe it's just that, that my drum instructors used to like hitting my hands with drumsticks or whatever <laughs> per se, but it's, it, but it's, it's constructive criticism that yeah, the crossmen that, they do. I mean, it's just the old like, school ways are not allowed. Yeah, Charlie crossmen, Fox. Okay? Charlie Fox. <laughs> when I was at Madison, used to yeah, I'd come home with bruises all the time. And uh, but it was one of those things like it's it's a different world, obviously. And when you're in DCI, you're expected to know your craft. You will not you will not be there on day one or the MMX without knowing what you're supposed to do. Right. And that's where the crossmen staff. Uh, that I've seen, and I've seen Regiment, and I've seen Blue Devils and all those, but I see the Crossman staff really 
have raised the bar for perfection for, for how they would like to see it. And and I think that that's across the activity is that probably 30 years ago, people had a different impression about the instruction that was going on. And now drum corps are taught by real music educators. Right. And that the old school way of doing things is not acceptable. So the whole profile of the activity and the excellence that we deliver uh, is all a, a function of the quality of the educators and then the talent of the players. So where does where does the discipline come from? So let's 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 talk about that real quick because there's so folks out there that are marching high school band or, or they're in junior high bands right now. And they go, I want to be at that level, but they may be afraid of the war stories like old guys like myself, oh, it sticks across the hands. But that, that doesn't happen anymore, obviously. Right, right. Um, so where does the discipline come? If someone messes up, do they are they harder upon themselves or the vets hard on them or or does the staff really come down on them? I they get to hear constructive criticism from the staff. And just like any educational environment, you know, they'll, they'll, there's different methods for different people. Some right. people respond differently to different things. So it's up to the instructors to figure out how these folks respond, the f- people that are in front of them. And a lot of times it's just either changing the voice that's in front of them by adding a consultant that's there for a day or two that can, you know, just change how things are going, change up the pace a little bit, or the instructors themselves change the pace a little bit. And, and try to figure out, it's almost like a puzzle to them. Okay, how do I get through to this individual in a way that they can understand and it will improve right. what they're doing? Because not everybody receives the information the same way. And no amount of wrapping you across the knuckles is going to change that. It did. I think that's, I think that's the, really the message there that those ways don't apply. I tell you what, I can, pair, I can play a paradiddle. uh better than anybody because that was that was basically one of those things like oh you don't do it right crack do so, it again so you do it respond again, do it again. to beatings okay i got it yeah that's, that's basically <laughs> it that's how i was in the military too but no i mean i was showing i was showing my son matthew who starts drum lessons today mm-hmm. um i was showing him okay this you know ha- here's how you do a drum roll he got that down i said okay here's a paradiddle here's a double paradiddle and he was like whoa what and i'm like well that's pretty much the only things i remember because it was beat into me you know kind of thing so but like i said it, it it's constructive criticism you know, it's and I've seen uh, I've seen the staff go, no, that's not right. And they, they weren't really they were upset that the note was wrong, but they really didn't scream at the performer. They were like, no. this is what we wanted you to do. This is what you know. You need yeah, a lot to of times they'll show them. They'll right. Just, exactly. They have a pair of sticks in their hands and they'll show them this is this is how to do it. So then they work with that individual until, oh, OK, I get it. You know, right. And then it, they were able to reproduce that sound. It's probably the, you know, some people can read the music, and I look at that stuff a lot of times. It looks like <laughs> Greek to me, especially the percussion stuff. Uh, and then they'll they'll look at it and just repeat it. They'll just right. be able to do it. And then others, they need the visual or they need the the actual audio, audio sa- the sound of it all in order to be able to reproduce it. So we you know we learn differently. It's amazing, folks. Of course, you can go to crossman.org for more information about the Crossman. Uh, Texas' only world-class drum corps, top 20, again, in the world for the last several years. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So what can you tell us about the music? I'm trying to get some secrets out of you. It's going to be great. For the next 10 minutes, I'm trying to get a secret out of you. It's awesome. It's great music. So, okay, we've had (laughs) protests. We had Fragile. We had protests. Right. And what's this year? we've, We've already pretty much told people that the, if you just think of the word gypsy <laughs> and all the all the mental pictures that yeah, you, you should, that, you that should word conjures up <laughs> and the sound of that right that you'll have a good idea of where we're heading with this the idea is that we want to people know what the crossmen are and what you know we're this aggressive you know jazz oriented world music oriented uh, ensemble and we're not going to let them down. You know, we have a 40 year history. We don't want to just reprise music from the 40 years. Right. So we're not going to, well, that, that might be an expect expectation. There may be people going, okay, it's our 40 year anniversary. 
they're going to bring something from Yeah, this each isn't going to be Crossman greatest hits, you know, okay. just because it's our 40th year. We wanted to avoid that. But we also wanted people to go that's the Crossman, you know, without a doubt. So so that's what you're going to hear. And it, you know, our number one rule is that we engage the audience. We're not changing that. That's what we want to do. It will be exciting. It will get the goosebumps going. And this year, we're not going to have a down ending. The last couple of years, we had we had a down ending, right. and you know that it was appropriate for the for the concept, and it was a little different. And it you know, made people squirm a little bit, <laughs> but you know the end result is. You know, they were very successful, engaging programs. Too. I love you, Fred, but you're you're just not going to let us know, huh? I can't. I can't <laughs> tell you. you know, we 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 do, we do a deliberate thing right. when we announce this stuff, and Ed has the keys. So Ed. until Ed starts the motor, it's not happening. Ugh. So there you. So go. how can you how can you see the first performance, folks? Let me tell you how you can see the first performance. You're going to come to San Antonio on June thirteenth, Friday. You're going to give us 20 bucks, And what's that going to get you? Well, that'll get you entry into the MMX on Friday night. But that's also going to get you an entry into the one-mile run that's on Saturday morning. Hey, if you don't feel like waking up on Saturday morning, all the money, every bit of that $20, $19.99, no, $20 goes to the Crossman. Right. Every bit of it. So June 13th, you've got to be in the stands. Uh, we're going to put seats in the stands. Or, or I don't know what that saying is, but we're going to fill the stands at Blossom Athletic Center here in San Antonio. And uh, and you're going to be able to see just what Fred and I have been talking about for the last year. We're going to be talking about for the next few weeks uh, or a couple months because the Crossman 40th year, the performance, the, the mu- musical part of it, the visualization of it is just going to be amazing. Yeah, that it's you're going to enjoy it. We've got a new uniform to go on top of that. The, the new uniform will be in aligned with the theme. Oh, here we go. Okay? So, so we Is know that much. Is there still an Aussie? Okay. We're not changing that. Yeah. We're, I, not, I we're, just, we're just, not wearing berets or I just visualized like this gypsy bandanas and stuff. Remember, we're going to be the crossmen. That's the number one okay. thing. People right. are going to, when we turn that corner in the stadium and start to enter the field, people will know that it's the crossmen. Uh, we do have the new name, the name of the show, and the logo design, and hey, all that, that is? stuff is done, but we're not <laughs> releasing it yet. <laughs> so we're pretty far along. So I, I take comfort that I, that you know I've heard the music, members have all played it, and however, uh, and it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. June thirteenth, come on down, MMX. Uh, obviously, we're going to be there. Move in three weeks prior, but we're going to be there doing shows every day live and then uh, talking to the incredible musical athletes. Um, the battery, it, it's just going to be amazing. The color guard are just phenomenal. Yeah, they, they just, it's amazing. They just keep getting better and better every year. And they they were the most fun group to be around last summer. They were just up and excited and happy to be there every day. And it's a long grind. So it it takes people's you know definite decision every morning that they wake up that they're going to enjoy every moment of this. And that was the guard. That was them. Yeah, definitely. They're amazing. I mean, even at the banquet, the end of the year banquet, we just uh, we just celebrated here a couple months ago. Uh, they were the most vocal and most appreciative group. Yeah, I'll they say. were positive, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, so we're happy. We're, there's going to be a bunch of them back and, and looking for great things from them. Yeah, because we were talking. We, we to, haven't seen them in a while. We haven't seen them since December. Now, are they are they are they doing their own little camps? Are they getting together? They're not doing their own camps no. because most of them are involved in Winter Guard right. programs. So maybe through their either their high school, or their college, or independent groups, they're probably having one show a week uh, every right. weekend, and they started. Most of them in December with rehearsals every weekend, uh, getting in, getting prepped for you know those those performances and everything. So, you know, Winter Guard International puts on a great series of events all around the country, and then there are your your local Winter Guard groups that are other competition opportunities for people, all in preparation for uh, the drum lines have a competition up in Dayton, Ohio, for their championships, and the Color Guard's the same thing. And it's it's growing leaps and bounds. So the 
they had to add another venue because they're just running out of put out of space. That's number, awesome. Number of groups that are going there. Well, that just makes all of the color guards in DCI better because everyone's better trained. It's just that's it, and that's it's so important. But we were talking about how it's grown over the years. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of DCI or drum corps that have gone away due to financial reasons or what have you. Um, but there are so many fans out there. I mean, like you said, at the championships during the drumline battles, there were thousands of people on the street. Yes. And we'll just think of it this way. You know, it used to be there were a lot of cores and there were a lot of local groups. Right. And most of the cores were 50 or 60 members. If there were 100 cores at 50 or 60 members, that's five or 6,000 participants. <laughs> now we right. have about 40 groups, and the, the maximum number you can have is 150. Well, guess what? That's 6,000 participants. So really the participation side of it, if you look at it that way, hasn't changed a whole lot over that time since DCI was founded. The difference is, is you don't have five groups in one little town, you know, that only stay competing in a local parade. And, you know, that stuff's kind of disappeared. The cost of doing this has just grown exponentially. The 22 world-class cores are in that million dollars to million and a half neighborhood every year in order to keep themselves funded. The open-class groups are in that three to $400,000 a year. It's kind of hard to come up with that money overnight. So the the real exciting thing has been in the last year is DCI's new initiatives that, you know, you have the uh, sound sport initiative, which yep. is for groups under 50, you know, under 50 members. So that's right under the threshold for the open class groups. And you can start to build an organization. You can perform in your local neighborhoods and you can do the parades or perform in the gazebo or on a gym floor or whatever uh, to, to try and get some momentum going so you can start fundraising. And, and if you ever, you might stay there forever or you might say, you know what, we want to become an open class core and right. make that transition. That's the path that the Guardians have chosen. So they're under review to be an open class group. So in one year, they made the transition from Sound Sport to uh, open class. And Jonathan's done a lot of work. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's really young, but he has a lot of energy and really has a plan for getting things done, and he's done pre pretty well. And that's what we've talked about real quick. Uh, Fred, we, we've said, you know, if, if this is your dream, go for your dream. Yeah. You know, don't let everybody ever tell you, oh, yeah, you can't do it. The only person who's going to keep you from doing it is yourself. Yeah, it just I think back on my own experiences when I was in my 20s and we were – in the race fuel business, there wasn't anybody there telling us that you can't do it and look out. You know, we built a, a great organization over time. And Every time I see that logo, I think of you. Yeah, I'm like, hey, there's Fred. <laughs> just watch ESPN2 and watch the drag races and you'll see VP stickers all yep. over everything. Well, that didn't happen by accident. That right. happened with a lot of years of work by a lot of people. But it was in the early days when we were in our 20s, it was two guys in a pickup truck. So, right. um don't let anybody kill that dream off. And and Jonathan kind of reminds me of those days with what he's doing and, and, you know, the efforts that he's putting out. So we try to encourage him and help him wherever we can. Uh, the, the other initiative is the drumline battle. I mean, you just look at how, mu how far it's come in one year. We had the first one. The drumline battle that is on YouTube now where the crossmen are playing against Jersey surf <laughs> right before the awards were right, right. announced at, at the Alamo dome, 540,000 views is incredible. Uh, so, and you see groups from Japan, China, Taiwan, it's just, and Europe, it's just growing South American groups and you can do it virtually. So you, know, you can battle, line up two videos and, and have people vote on them or they can be live like our event. So the whole idea behind those two initiatives is to give people an opportunity to get involved in this great thing that we do and be on the DCI stage and not have to spend a million dollars to do it. Right. So it, it's, it's great for us. It adds support to the drum corps because it's also a pipeline for membership for people, you know, that have that dream, but don't haven't, aren't quite ready for it. Right. And it engages more people. You just look at championships alone. Uh, this year for the first time ever championships were simulcast on the Saturday night 
and there we estimate there were 3,200 people bought subscription that pay per view subscription. But after doing some surveying, we estimate that there are about 9,000 people were actually watching from their TV or computer screen or whatever, right. streaming over the Internet. There were over 17,000 people in, paying customers right. in the Dome, plus in the Lucas Oil Stadium, plus another 3,000 participants you know, from the course of the weekend. So there were over 20,000 people in the stadium, 8,500 people at home watching that's the largest crowd ever for a champion, DCI championships in its history, in its 42-year history. Wow. So to me, that just shows momentum and a positive direction. The movie theater, which is Thursday night of championship week, when you have all play. Right. So all 40 groups are on that, on that stage at Lucas Oil Stadium. The last 15 groups to go on the field are simulcast in movie theaters around the country. There were 48,000 people watching in movie theaters. That's amazing. You know, that, that's, you know, we're talking about, that's like a college football game, right? Yep. That, you know, the number of people that if they could be in the stand, plus I think there were seven or 8,000 people in the grandstand. So the, the attendance is growing. Uh, the events are growing. The participation is growing. It just seems like drum corps may be healthier than it ever has been, even though we have folks that remember it differently from the 70s right. and the 60s. You know? Now, you being on the DCI board, why, Why? and I know you guys have this discussion and everything, but why do you think that is? Why do you think it's it's growing in 2014 instead of it did, or more than it did in 2004? I, I'm just going to say we learn every year. We've got a great CEO that has a great business plan, and we have more people buying into his vision of what we need to be doing. Yeah. And with that, comes great planning and great ideas and activation of those great ideas. You got some great marketing and sales people involved and we've got some really talented drum corps directors too. There's more and more folks that have come out of the business world that are running these things and I think that that helps because they can help the music people, the performance people and and keep the wheels on these things because they're all powered by people and money and without either one of those it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, that's, they fail because they don't have the right resources to get the job done and they haven't generated the money that they need to operate. Yeah. And yeah, I think you told us last week, uh, that coming from, coming from your business, it, it has helped you with the crossman. I was getting that background. Yeah. I feel like it's funny because I feel like I've been groomed for this job. <laughs> you, know? you know, I spent, you know, I was an elementary education teacher that never taught my first day in, ever. I, you know, I did a student teacher thing and all that, but I was working on race cars. And I had a great time playing right. with race cars. Next thing I know, I'm in the racing fuel business and we build a great company. But when you're in that world, there's so many things that you can learn in that world that directly apply to what we're doing. Right. And that correlation is I feel like that's been my training grounds and, and been able to apply those things. So it's, it's been fun to see the similarities and, and try and, and draw on that knowledge and, and hopefully help others benefit from it's it. A, it's an interesting path where God takes us. You got it. I said that this morning. Yep. I was like, you know, I've got a criminal justice degree, 22 years in the military. I did law, did administrative assistance, executive administrative stuff. Uh, but my, my whole obviously my whole life is talking. So if, if I ever lost my voice or something happened to me, I'd be like, Oh, what am I going to do now? Because marketing and, and, and not really sales, but marketing uh, products or, or things that, that, that I believe in that as God has put into my life. Um, I think that's my, what my calling is. So well, I think, I think you believe in the things that you do. Right. And that can't help, but come out in enthusiasm for it. It's passionate and that gets people people's attention and that helps you help the organizations that you're trying to help uh, of course i love and i bleed crossman world-class drum corps <laughs> so folks uh we really appreciate you listening to this week's segment and we know we went a bit long but hey 
Uh, it's what happens when you own your own radio station. You can do what you want. Um, but, of course, you can find out more about Crossman.org. Follow them on Twitter at Crossman. Uh, Facebook page as well. If you love the symbols, if you, know, if you are one of those folks that, uh, that love playing the symbols, the symbol line has their own Facebook page, which is totally cool. And they will have it on there one day this year that they're going to do symbol day. Okay, Mark, what is that? They wear the symbols the entire day. They do everything with the symbols in their it's hands. It's like Edward Scissor Hands, only with symbols. <laughs> symbols, that's right. Yeah. So, of course, we'd like to thank everybody for listening. Follow DCI on Twitter. Follow Drumline Battle on Twitter as well. And, of course, Crossman. Follow them on Twitter. Over 13,000 Twitters. We're going to find it. Trying to get a double that this year and followers we're going to try to get over twenty six thousand followers for a crossman and of course uh you can hear it on i speak for you.net every week but of course this is the crossman hour otherwise known as the bone show frank you uh, fred thanks for coming in thanks mark and of course this is russian christmas and a lot we'll see you next week god bless and those crossmen are coming into town if you have any issues or any problems please let us know and uh, the weather is going to be perfect That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Crossman, World Class Drum Corps, and I Speak For You Radio Events want you to save the dates. 13 and 14 June 2014. That's right. The Crossman, Texas' only World Class Drum Corps, representing San Antonio, Texas to the world, presenting their second annual One Mile Run, Walk, Stroll, Crawl, whatever you need to do. How fast can you run one mile? All information on ispeakforyou.net or crossman.org. I say save the dates 13 and 14 June. The run is on the 14th, but the 13th is their MMX, their dress rehearsal, before they go out on tour around the country. Find out more information again at crossmen.org or on ispeakforyou.net.